And here we are having hugs. Councilor Maria Audemary and uh, Judy Wallace and Mitzi Blair. Thank you very much for joining us. As I said in the intro at the start of the show, a lot of people every night or every few nights in the news hear some things that are tragedies in the, in the, in the Jane Finch area. And uh, you know what? You have some good stories about it. It's your, it's your area. You two uh, work there, live there. So let's just talk about it because it's not all bad. There are some wonderful, wonderful, glorious uh, stories going on. So let's start. Councillor? In fact, crime is down. 31 Division, which reports to Jane Finch. Uh, the officers tell us that crime is down. Violent crime is down. Um, there was a shooting the other day, last week. And we wanted to assure people that it was uh, a not a common thing in our community. Jane Finch is made up of many communities. Fir Grove, where, where Judy lives. Do you live at Shoreham? No, actually, I live um, by Finch and Sentinel. Finch and Sentinel. Mm -hmm. There are many communities at Jane Finch, and there are many programs that we're very proud of. Uh, youth, single moms, getting together, seniors, programs that we need. And it's a priority community. It's a mm -hmm. strong neighborhood, according to the city's definitions, and we want to keep it that way. Mitzi, tell me about it. Well, it's a beautiful neighborhood. I've been, I've grown up there and I moved out and my heart's always been going back there. So um, we have wonderful things going on, such as uh, we have a new magazine. It's a new lifestyle and fashion magazine by the name of Boss Magazine. And um, it's a great opportunity for um, young photographers, editors, a uh, lot, like, you know, so many opportunities. And also for myself, I'm a young entrepreneur. I, um, I manage my own photography business out there, Blair Photography. So it's, it's looking very beautiful right now, so. And it is, and you have uh, York University just to the north. There's lots of, you know, parks and lots of open space. Oh, yeah. So it's, uh, there are a lot of positive things going on there. Now, Judy. Yes, well, I live in Toronto Community Housing, and through that, they're able to offer tenants leadership roles. I think this is really important because it helps them to build their capacity to lead others. Um, through this, residents are able to learn about the resources that are available in the community. Um, I personally am the garden coordinator in my community. I run a garden program. That's what, what is a garden program? Let's just get down to the brass tacks. Tell me what a garden community program garden. is. So we're a, we're a community gardening program. We, we've been allowed a space that allows 14, 14 families to garden, grow healthy vegetables for their families that they could take home and use at home. It's wonderful because the children and their families come together and, they, and the children are eating healthier because of it. So you're a farmer? That's really what you're here to talk about. Urban farmer. Urban farmer. Urban farmer. So that's terrific. But let's say, say, so you said there's 14 plots? Yes. So, I mean, that's, that's not too many. I mean, there's a lot of families there. That, yes. I mean, is there a greater demand than the resources that are given to you or that are allocated? There is a greater demand. Last year we had only nine families. This year we've been able to increase to 14 families. Next year we'll be able, might have to find another plot in another area of fir growth. But right, but what? The program is growing and it's becoming more popular. I don't know who's going to answer this, but I'll throw the question out there. With York University and its great resources, I mean, it has a lot of really smart people. It has a lot of money there. It has a lot of, uh, you know, uh, resources as far as, you know, physical activities. Is there interaction between York and the community? 20, 25 years ago when I was representing the York University area, uh, the, the groundswell of support from Jane Finch groups was be a partner with us. You're not a partner. And you know what? They've turned things around. They are a partner in the community now. They are a good partner. And so the community can go to York or to avail itself of York uh, facilities? In fact, York has a person that they've hired to deal with the local community. And we have joint programs. Okay, so tell me more about some of the good stuff that's going on in Jane Finch. We're going to get, we're going to dispel all the, <laughs> there are a few bad things going on. I know that. But we're going to just sort of, we're, the purpose for you to be here, I'm glad the three of you are here, is to, is to outweigh that and to show people that, you know, there are good things going on. The, one Maria. of the problems is an architectural problem. I think you would agree that many of the townhouse complexes have been built in a very insular way, inward looking. Uh, emergency vehicles can't get in. Right. Uh, that's happening all over the Jane Finch communities and elsewhere, especially in Scarborough. Um, people don't have proper addresses, that there are no eyes on the street. And that's one of the reasons that communities like Regent Park, mm -hmm. like more recently uh, Lawrence Heights, and hopefully next is going to be one of the Jane Finch communities, rebuild, a total rebuild with an eyes on the street perspective. Good what community does that mean, planning. eyes on the street? It what means that, that, you know, it means that in a, if you live in a, in a house in the city, you have 
all the houses facing the street, the houses across from you facing the street, you can look out your window and see what's happening there. That's not possible in some of these townhouse complexes. Mitzi, you're shaking your head in, a, in agreement. I mean, this is true because, you know, I was raised there. I grew up there for a very long time and then, we, you know, we moved out. But um, while living there, it's very enclosed, so you can't really see, like, you know, the rest of the community and what's going on outside. So there's a reason for that. It's just, I mean, I'm sure these architects in the Times were not, uh, you know, completely off the ball. I mean, they tried to do it. They tried to do it well. It's just not working out. So, but you're, you're interested. Well, you, all three of you are interesting. But you moved out and you moved back. Yeah. What pulled you back? Um, honestly, the community is a very warming and welcoming community. And um, I, I motivate, I mean, I help to encourage a lot of my peers, especially that are still in the neighborhood community, because, you know, I like to do a lot of positive things. And, and I like to encourage my peers around me as well. So that's why I go back to try to help. And so you, when you say you go back, do you, you actually live Oh, yeah, here? I'm involved. I, lived, I live right at Keelan Finch. Um, and I'm always, uh, okay, for example, for Boss Magazine, we're always um, at Yorkwood's Library. We operate there every Mondays. So I'm always in the community. I'm always involved. And, um, yeah, and I always mentor and try to do as best as I can. Mentoring is a very important thing in our community, especially through the library system. Oh, yes. We have... We have university kids mentoring kids in elementary school. We have high school kids mentoring kids in elementary school. There's a real generational, intergenerational play happening. Do you find that? That's one of the things I'm, that I would really like to touch on. The seniors in the community also need a lot of services. And through my role, I tend to um, try and really connect with the seniors when I'm doing outreach. Like today, I went and did some outreach and talked to the seniors about the type of services that they need what activities would bring them out because a lot of seniors are isolated at home right. in the evenings maybe during the holidays and we as leaders in the community need to make sure that there's activities that they know about and that they could participate okay, in okay i have one last question for you two you're a politician i'm gonna ask you <laughs> and, you'll, and when you hear back. the question you'll understand why okay. how did you two get to be so good <laughs> <laughs> We have no, you're both stellar <laughs> people, you know, you're just, uh, it's, it's wonderful to hear from you, but uh, you're doing great things. I think it's just a love for your community and a love for what you do, because when you do what you love, you do it well, and you yes. don't think that it's such a hard job. Most well, definitely, I agree you're with you. You're lovely. You're no, no, lovely. Isn't that terrific? Yes. Now, now, I'm not saying that politicians are bad. I would never say that. We're not no. lovely. Politicians are terrific. <laughs> and uh, you have lots of successes as well, as, as your record shows. But, I mean, you two are terrific. And thank, thank you very you. much. It's thank lovely you. to listen to you. Thank and you uh, very it's much. always lovely to listen to you two. Thanks for coming in tonight. <laughs> thank you for and, having uh, us. And good yes, luck with you. it. So, thank is, you. is the harvest over? It's over. We had a harvest festival last week. You missed it. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't know about it. Next, Next year, year, I want to know. Oh. I want to know. I'll be there as if I drag a camera for the harvest. You'll be at Fir Grove uh, next year. Fir Grove, I'll be there. That's yeah. right. Okay, thank you very, very much. At any rate, come back with Sally Spencer. Stay with us. Thank you. Great. <laughs>